Several weeks ago, AMD got in touch with me and they were like, Oh mate, I see you do that 3D CAD stuff on your channel over there. And I was like, aye. And they were like, well, we've got a new range of graphics cards coming out. We want to send you one. And I was like, what, what, what? Hang on a minute. A big tech company wants to send some hardware to a channel with an audience of people that could actually use this stuff for a change? This is happening? Okay, fine, let's talk. Tip of the cap to you, sir. Let's see what you've got. So I spoke with AMD and they had a big range of new cards coming out. They've made a massive push recently to be part of the competition again. They've got Vega coming out. They had Vega 64, Vega 56, the Frontier Edition. They've got the new high-end WX7100 coming out. And ultimately, I went with the cheapest card in the range, the very, very, very cheapest, lowest of the low card, which was the Radeon Pro WX3100. And I went with this one for a damn good reason, because this thing is a little gem. Right, now as the sun comes out to screw it with my lighting, <laughs> why does somebody with an unreasonably ridiculous graphics card fetish when presented with AMD's entire range of new graphics cards, why does he choose the cheapest one in the lineup, the WX3100, right? Well, there's a good reason for that. I'm gonna put this down so I'm not waving it around. Right, my channel and its content is focused towards enterprise customers, people that work in engineering companies. I work with 3D CAD, which is a professional application. And in the professional world, warranty, reliability, and support are far more important than squeezing every last inch of performance out of a system. It's much, much more safe, beneficial. Uh, it's just covering your ass as a, as a software consultant to put a system in with a Xeon and a professional card than it is to be clever and try and put in an overclocked i7 and a 1080 Ti into a drawing office. It's safer for you and it's safer for the business to go with workstation grade components. That's just a fact. If you're working at home, that doesn't really apply to you. But in an office environment, that's the way things are. So this card is the WX3100. It's Radeon Pro, which is an evolution of AMD's Fire Pro line, which are their professional grade workstation cards. It's the equivalent to Nvidia's Quadro cards. So with that, you're getting vendor certified driver support, which is really, really important in business. It's really important to have that. It doesn't make things go any faster, but when it comes to reliability and peace of mind and almost like an insurance policy, those things are really important. So with this card here, like I said, it's not gonna set any world records. In terms of specs, it's really weak. Do not even think about buying this if you're looking to build a PC for a mix of work and gaming. It can't run any games at all at any reasonable level. What is impressive about this card though is its price point. It comes in at around about $180, about 170 English quid, which again, you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's still a fair bit of money. I can buy a good gaming card for that. Like I said, I'm not interested in gaming cards at this point. This thing here for $180 comes with four gig of onboard video RAM, which is really, really important with Autodesk OGS, the one graphic system engine. Four gig of video RAM is gonna have you covered for pretty much any data set you can throw at this card. So you're getting a professional grade card with professional drivers certified by Autodesk, by Dassault, by PTC, and you're getting four gig of video RAM. It's gonna cover you for pretty much any 3D card workflow you can throw at it, as long as that 3D card application doesn't need the raw horsepower of the graphics card, as long as that 3D card application doesn't render on the GPU. This thing here is gonna have you covered four gig of video RAM for $180. There is no other professional workstation card on the market right now from Nvidia that comes even close to that. You cannot get a quadro or four gig of video RAM for anywhere near that price point. So that left me with a bit of an interesting conundrum for the channel and that was how do I showcase this card in this video because this is not a card that I would recommend you buy for a home built system. It's not that kind of a card. Most of these cards are gonna get bought and end up in the likes of Dell Precision Workstations and HBZ Workstations specced via the online configurators for those websites. So it's not something that really suits going into a big ATX case with a tempered glass side window lit up by RGB lighting. It's not that kind of card for those kind of systems. So when it comes to showcasing this card in this video and providing benchmarks for you, I decided to go with something that I think would be the most suitable system to be built at home with, and that was the mini the ITX form factor fractal design node 202 case and I put in a Ryzen 7 CPU the 1700X I went with 16 gig of system RAM and I went with a SATA 3 solid state drive I did try to put in an Intel 600P NVMe PCI Express M.2 solid state drive but the M.2 slot on the motherboard that I bought was broken so I couldn't do that that let me in a world of bother uh, so that is the system I've decided to go with Let's take a look at the benchmarks for 3D CAD for the WX3100. 
So I've put the WX3100 through the TFI 23 point stress tests, that 23 tests on Autodesk and Vendor on real world data sets. The top bar is the system with the WX3100 in and I've added two additional systems in as a point of perspective. It's not supposed to be a comparison between three systems competing against each other, that's not the point of this. The second system is the same AMD Ryzen 1700X CPU, but it's in a micro ATX form factor with a Quadro M4000. That graphics card is much more powerful than the WX3100, but it's also much more expensive at four times the cost. And then the third system at the bottom, the gray bar, that is my daily driver rig. That is the i7-4790K with a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti in there, one of the most powerful graphics cards in the world as of today. And as the tests are progressing on, you can see that the system at the top with the WX3100 in is lagging behind in a few of the tests. That is purely because, and this will be confirmed on the Cinebench test, which is the final test, the micro ITX build is just not sufficient enough for cooling. It's not something I would ever recommend that you put in an office environment, uh, but there is just a lack of cooling in there, which means the CPU is getting too hot and it was having to throttle itself back to keep cool, which means that in quite a few of the tests, which were CPU weighted, which is in fact most of the tests, the top system was lagging behind quite a lot. And that was fairly evident, but that is not a reflection of the graphics card. The reflection of the graphics card will be on the FPS tests, which is the one that we're most interested in. There we go, so the first test, and this is one of the most relevant tests out of them all, is the large data set. It was 20,300 occurrences, 2,300 physical parts with no visual effects enabled. And it just goes to show that even a cost-effective graphics card like the WX3100 is not going to introduce any bottlenecks into the system over and above one of the most powerful graphics cards in the world, the GTX 1080 Ti, yielding a difference of a staggering 3 frames per second between the two graphics cards. And that's more to do with the CPU than anything else. If you look at the two Ryzen systems, you can see there is a difference of one frame per second uh, between the Quadro M4000, which is monumentally more powerful than the WX3100. But in terms of FPS delivered to your screen, there was pretty much no difference whatsoever. So that, if anything, highlights the lack of any bottleneck introduced by going down to a cost-effective card like the WX3100 for your inventor slash 3D CAD workflow. So this second test is one of those tests that kind of drives it all home. It's the same large data set as the first test, but this time with all visual styles enabled. This is ambient occlusion, realistic textures, reflections, image-based lighting enabled, and you can see the FPS on all three systems, regardless of whether you're using the most powerful graphics card in the world or a cost-effective WX3100 for $180. The FPS delivered to the screen is exactly the same and that is using one of the biggest data sets that you'll probably come across in Autodesk Inventor. Very few people would use a data set larger than this and it's good to know that even though the WX3100 is the weaker card it has enough VRAM in it to make sure that you're covered on these larger data sets and even going with something like a GTX 1080 Ti upgrading to something like that wouldn't give you any visual benefits in terms of smoothness or fidelity at all over something like the WX3100. So this third test is quite an interesting one. This is 1,154 parts and 3,500 occurrences. It's the BAC Mono Sports Car Assembly. It's a roundabout, I would say, an average size large assembly that most people would use in industry. And this is with no visual styles enabled, uh, just typical modeling mode. And you can see that the difference between the two Ryzen systems is two FPS. That's the difference between a WX3100 and a Quadro M4000. Two frames per second is well within the margin of error. So visually, from what a user would see, absolutely no different. And then Moving up to the i7-4790K with the GTX 1080 Ti, we get an extra 20 frames per second or so with that system, but that's more to do with the CPU running at a higher clock speed than anything else. The fourth FPS test is the same BAC Mono Sports Car Assembly, but this time with all visual styles enabled, ambient occlusion, reflections, IBL, etc. And you can see the difference between the two Ryzen systems. The WX3100 actually pulls ahead by one frame per second, which is, again, within the margin of error. I wouldn't say that system was any better than the Quadro M4000. It's pretty much identical because it's the CPU driving the graphics. The graphics card just needs to make sure that it's got enough VRAM to not be a bottleneck. 
and the WX3100 proves that it is not a bottleneck at all. And then the system with the 1080 Ti with the better CPU in there pushes ahead by an extra four to five frames per second. And if anything, it just goes to prove that the graphics card, I mean, the difference between the 1080 Ti and the WX3100 is monumental. If the graphics card was having its horsepower tested, there would be a far bigger difference than four frames per second between the 1080 Ti and the WX3100 in a test like this. For this fifth test, cards on the table, I can't explain the variance between the three tests. It's not consistent with what we've seen in the previous tests. It's a single part model. It's an alloy wheel with shaded with edges on and no visual styles enabled. No shadows, no reflections, no nothing. It's typically what a user would have enabled as their modeling day to day. Uh, with the WX3100, we're seeing a 227 FPS reading and then moving up to the M4000, 330. That's a 100 frames per second variance between the two cards. So I don't know what that is. Maybe the CPU bottleneck has been removed and the GPU is allowed to now stretch its legs. I don't know. Possibly it is that. Uh, but having said that, at 227 frames per second on a single part model, that is absolutely way more than enough, especially in most drawn offices. You tend to not have anything more than a 60 hertz refresh rate monitor. So pushing out 220 frames to a 60 hertz monitor is basically not an issue whatsoever. So that's not a problem. I would say the WX3100 is more than adequate for single part modeling. And then the final test, the sixth test, this is the same single part model, the alloy wheel, this time with all visual styles enabled, ambient occlusion, reflections, etc. And we see a similar scaling as we did with the same model with no visual styles enabled. And it's similarly inconsistent with what we saw when we enabled visual styles on a large assembly. I don't know, perhaps it is the CPU bottleneck being removed with the large amounts of geometry on screen. We're working with low amounts of geometry and perhaps the GPU is now allowed to stretch its legs. So even at 85 FPS on the W x3100 on a single part model with all visual styles enabled there is no visual lag there's no tearing there's no drop off of visual assets it is absolutely fine the wx3100 85 m4000 at 103 and then the 1080 ti up at 126 frames per second right there you have it there's the results what is the conclusion and what was the point in doing all this right well the point as i said at the start was not to say hey amd have given us this free card i'm gonna go flog it to everybody as being the best thing since sliced bread hey ignore everything else and buy this because it's great that was not the point the point is, if you're on a budget and you need to buy a cost-effective card for an Autodesk application running the OGS, which is the One Graphics System engine, the likes of Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360 as well, and you need to be sure that you're running a certified card with vendor-supported graphics drivers, then the WX3100 is not going to introduce a bottleneck to any of your workflows, as I've shown in the 23-point stress tests. The purpose of this card is not to set your world on fire, it is not to break any records, it's to just do a job at a good price. With 4 gig of VRAM, it's not going to introduce any bottlenecks with loading large text textures, especially on large data sets. As I've shown, I've opened up a 20,000 occurrence assembly and the VRAM was more than enough at 4 gig to cope with those textures. And don't forget, this card is not suitable for gaming. It will not run any games at any reasonable level. And also, as a final point, I'll say if there is a chance that at any point in the future, you might work with applications that do require powerful graphics cards, any applications that render on the GPU, this probably is not going to be a good choice. And just as a final point for anyone interested in specs, most of the people that buy this kind of card aren't interested in specs. They just put it into their Dell workstation via the configurator and then hope that it does the job, which indeed it will do. But if anyone's interested, it has two mini display ports on the back, one full size display port 1.4 capable of pushing out three 4K displays at 60 hertz and one 5K display at 30 hertz. In terms of GPU compute, it's not the best. As mentioned before, it's got eight compute units, 512 stream processors. It's running at a 1219 megahertz peak clock engine. Uh, it's got 1.25 teraflops of single precision compute performance and 78 gigaflops of double precision compute performance. In terms of memory, it has six gigabits per second of memory data rate. The memory clock speed is running at 1500 megahertz. It has four gig of GDDR5 with a 96 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. And that's probably about enough. I think at this point, all these specs are meaningless as long as it just does the job for your 3D CAD application. This isn't Linus Tech Tips. This isn't Gamers Nexus or Jake's Two Cents. Nobody really cares about thermals and specs for a card like this as long as it does the job. If it doesn't work, guess what you do? You call up Dell Support and you say, can you give us an engineer on site next day, please, and fix my card pronto. All right, then, I'll do for this one. Thank you very much, guys. If you like what I do, there's a link in the description for uh, Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much to everyone that has done that so far. And thank you also to everyone that signed up for a Pluralsight trial and has indeed carried on their subscription. 
I've got a Vault Professional course dropping anytime soon and also I've got a couple of 3D CAD Inventor courses on Pluralsight already. So if you want to check those out, by all means, check out the links in the description down below. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!